Good morning, afternoon, or evening. This is part four, I think. I, sometimes I lose track of what part I'm on. For our risk of rain inspired tutorial, risk of flame, and the first thing we're gonna do right now is jump in and get our jumping sprite in because that's driving me crazy that he, when he jumps, it's still the running animation, which is, it just looks horrible. So copy the player, the sprite player, and we'll call it sprite player jump. Let's go in here. And let's delete the second image here and come right into it. Okay, let's see. When he's jumping up, I'm just going to raise... Uh, let's see. I'm just going to do this. Well, that worked until I did the other one. That kind of looks like he's jumping. And I'm going to move these out just a little bit. Okay, there's a jumping image. Now we want to give him one more image. And this one's going to be... Well, actually, let's just see what that looks like first. Man, sometimes I get so picky with sprite art. You gotta be careful, because you actually have to, you know, build the game eventually. Sometimes I get just doing sprite art, and I'm like, I need to start actually working on this game instead of just moving two or three pixels all the time, because honestly, you can always change the sprite art later. So let's go into him, and let's go into our step event, now that we have a jumping animation. And... You can see that the gravity code is after all of our other code here for changing the sprites. That's convenient that I did it that way because now whenever the gravity is that, we can just set the sprite index it's right after the gravity sprite player jump and semicolon. Let's see what that does. That looks pretty good. Looks better than it did before, right? I mean, before it just looked crappy. I might want to change. Let's uh, let's do this. Let's take some time to make it look a little bit better even. So I'm going to copy this image. And then what we're going to do is we're going to grab his arms. And, whoa, let's take off that. And lift him up like that. And then we're going to stick this leg out, kind of. Let's see. Hmm. That looks bad. That's better. We'll just see what that looks like. Okay, so let's go back into the game. Not the game, but the step event. And let's change. Let's see, in here, um, instead of just sprite index equals, do if v speed is less than or equal to zero. Do this, do uh, sprite index, wait. This should be by the gravity still. Okay, and get rid of this. 
So we've got sprite index equals sprite player jump, and then we do if v speed is greater than or equal to zero. Whoa, I want that to be less than or equal to zero. It's less than or equal to zero. Image index equals um, image index equals zero. Else image index equals one. So if your V speed, your vertical speed, and I've spelled that wrong. If your vertical speed is less than zero, it means you're going up. So we're gonna have the first image in that in those two images when he's going up. If it's greater than zero, then you're going down. And once we start going down, we're gonna change that into the second image. The second uh, image index, well actually it's image index one, but it's the second image, right? And uh, that will change it into the sprite that makes it look like he's falling. And that will give a nice effect to our jumping, hopefully. <laughs> if I did it right, it should give a nice effect to the jumping. So let's take a look at that and see. Yeah, you can see he jumps up and then he kind of sticks his arms out when he starts to fall down. So that just adds, like, I think quite a bit to the game when you do that. When you add just a little bit of... I had, uh, I was talking with someone just the other day and he told me that, and I've believed this for many years, but he just said it and it reaffirmed it for me. He said, it's the small things in the game that make it. Like, you have to have good gameplay and stuff, but it's the small touch-ups that set your game apart. Where you can see that you have the passion to, uh, you know, add even just a little thing like changing the animation when you're falling down. Or maybe even adding dust when you hit the ground. Things like that. So, that is awesome. That's looking really good. And let's start, I don't know if I'll have time to finish this because I don't want to make this video too long because my videos have been taking forever to upload. I don't have fast enough internet and I can't upload these huge videos. They take hours and hours and hours to up. well, that's an exaggeration, but probably like about an hour to upload some of the longer ones, an hour to two hours. So I'm gonna try and keep this one short, but duplicate this player or sprite player and we'll call this one Sprite Player 3-Shot because we're going to do a 3-Shot animation and uh, I'm going to actually type that 3-Shot and this is just going to be the player he's going to pull a gun out and, t and pop off 3 shots so let's grab this and we'll start animating it and the first thing I want to do is Let's see. I'm trying to visualize this animation because I'm not going to use a reference for this one. I know, shame on me. I should go look up a reference, but I'm not going to for this one. So let's turn. Let's, uh, let me think here for a second. Why don't. We'll just have him start pulling up his arm, I guess. do this. Make it a little shorter. And in his hand, I'm going to give him a gun. That does not look like a gun. Oh, the lovely, lovely pixel art, right? Okay. Let's just leave it like this, I guess. Slow this down. Oh. Give me just a second. Sometimes this happens and then I can't select the sprites anymore. Oh, 
There we go. Okay. I don't know why it does that. Okay, let's do this. I'm going to bring this arm out a little bit and you'll see why in just a second. I'm I'm not really sure what I'm where I'm going with this animation yet. I'm just kind of guessing. So hopefully that doesn't end up biting me in the back. Let's do Yeah, that doesn't look too bad. Now I'm actually going to bring this arm back. Which seems kind of weird, but I think it's going to look good. We've got to turn it a little bit though, bring it forward. I'm going to Okay, I'm going to teach you a little animation trick that uh, I don't know if it'll look good in this situation, but I'm going to try it It looks good in some situations, especially with swords So what we're going to do is called a drag You can see his arm is in this position But we want him to move his arm over to the gun Like to where it looks like he's holding the gun with both hands Really quickly so what we're going to do, I've already drawn the two positions, but we're going to do a drag. So this one right here is going to look like it moved really fast, right? All of a sudden it just jumps there, but we're going to give it a little bit of a trail. Like this. Okay, and you can see there's a little bit of a trail, and this doesn't look too good right there, but... We've got uh, like a trail where he moves his hand and you can see there's a swipe image. Now what we need to do is the secret to the drag is to hold the position right after you do it. So only sometimes I move it just a little bit. So let's get rid of the drag mark, okay? And then what I like to do a lot of the time is move this just a little bit more. So it's like really fast and then it barely moves after that. So you can see he brings up his hands and then there's a slight drag as he brings his hand over. So, uh, yeah, honestly, it didn't really work in this situation. But you learned the trick. So it works really good with swords. So let's just leave him with his two arms up like this. And now he's going to pop off some shots, right? But we don't have enough room for that. So let's do a transform and. Uh, we'll resize the canvas. Make sure you click left here and take off keep as aspect ratio because we want we just want more room for the muzzle um, flare. So let's add let's do 24 onto the width and check left to make sure that's done. Okay, it worked. And right here. We're going to have him hold the position for just a second and then we're going to have him pop off a shot. So I'm going to copy this same image a few times and then copy it one more time and then I'm going to start showing some muzzle flares. So let's go with a really bright yellow and let's make it a little bit transparent. Okay, that looks good. And I'm going to copy that image and uh, shrink the f flare down just a tear, just a tear, just a tad. Okay, that shows I'm shooting once, right? Now I'm going to copy a few more of these, the, just the blank ones. Let's do, let's see, we've got one, 
two blank ones, so I'm going to do two more blank ones. Then I'm going to copy this one and move it over to the end. Copy this one, move it over to the end. Then I'm going to copy the blank one again and copy it one more time. Copy this one and move it over to the end. And if you're if you're losing me here, don't worry about it. I'm going to step through this here real fast. Then I'm going to copy this one, which was the very second one we did. Oops. Copy the second one and move the copy all the way to the end. Okay, you can see it fires three times and goes back to normal. So, um, what I did is I've got... He's, he's got his hand down, but it's got the gun. He moves it up, one, then he's got it up at the top. There's two images where he has it held like that. Then there's a muzzle flare, which dies down. Then there's two more images where he's holding it up. A muzzle flare dies down. Two more images, muzzle flare dies down, and then we get the second image at the very end as well, so that the image goes right back down again. So that's the animation for our three shot. And I ran out of time, but in the next video, we will add in the actual shooting. And I'll show you guys how to do that. We're going to use a different object for the purposes of modularizing this game. I'm going to do it that way. So I will see you guys next time. Make sure and like, favorite this video. And I really appreciate you guys' support. I'll talk to you later.